YouTube great Markiplier posted a video detailing whether he would smash or pass every single Pokemon. While the masses were enthralled by Mark's uh, preferences, I was more interested in something else. How good are the Pokemon Markiplier wanted to smash? And is it possible to get to rank one on the in-game ladder using a team made up of only smashable Pokemon? I should tell you up front that this challenge is basically impossible. Right now, the format allows for two restricted Pokemon, powerful Pokemon that dictate a lot of what your team can do. The only restricted Pokemon that Mark fancied were Lunala and Mewtwo, and Mewtwo was so bad in testing that it didn't even make it onto the team. Anyway, here's how I got to number one in the world with Pokemon Markiplier would smash. I started off around rank 250, a far way from the top. My first opponent had a Trick Room team with Calyrex and Zekrom, but I had a few tricks up my sleeve. I'm pretty sure that Lunala's uh, Moongeist Beam ignores Mimikyu's Disguise ability. I decided to lead off with Choice Band Urshifu and my sole restricted Pokemon, Lunala. Now, if you haven't seen Urshifu before, you're probably thinking, haha, that's a funny bear. This bear is anything but funny, but we'll get to that later. Lunala can kind of just do whatever it wants here and, and go after that Mimikyu unless... I mean, there's a chance that they're faster and hit me with like a double up, but I, I don't think it's likely. So we'll just go for Moongeist Beam here. And I feel like Urshavu may as well go for Wicked Blow. It's my strongest move. I think the real problem is going to be the Zekrom though. Zekrom is really scary. I feel like it's probably going to Dynamax here. My opponent knows that Mimikyu is in danger, so they switch it out. Ah, yeah, that's a good switch. Yeah, I don't do any damage this turn. That was a good switch. So the question is, is this Zekrom going to Dynamax? And if it does, can my Urshavu hang on? Urshavu is like decently high physical defense but i mean zekrom is really strong and if it has like a life orb or something we might we might be in for a bad time let's see how much this does wait but there's no dynamax huh so this is gonna do a ton of damage oh boy that's a neutral attack to a restricted pokemon it did like 80 percent oh <laughs> nice dodge nice dodge urshifu good job now urshifu has two quirky things about it first as you just saw its signature move always crits also its moves ignore protect for some reason now both my opponent's pokemon are in danger of being knocked out so i decide to go on the offensive yes yeah, so they're gonna follow me here to i mean save their zekrom i don't disagree with the move but um it's not gonna save them here and even though indeed he's known for being super bulky there's no way it survives this urshifu is just so powerful yeah i mean what are you supposed to do there you just get knocked out immediately like if their last pokemon is calyrex which it probably is then there was nothing they could do in that position urshifu just always um he's with the ko there and oh my god urshifu is it gonna hang on from this oh that was a crit dual wing beat is so bad dual wing beat is actually so bad nice job urshifu dodges and then survives yeah that's a super effective move from restricted pokemon and my urshifu is nothing in bulk lunala uses meteor beam a powerful two-turn rock move that boosts its special attack but thanks to its power herb item it can be used immediately let's go for meteor beam here hopefully pick up the ko i mean of course it picks up the ko this is super strong yeah as that comes down and now we're up four to two our opponent reveals their last two pokemon it's all gonna come down to the horse the thing is that I'm not quite out of the woods yet because they have a couple like kind of more like maybe they have like ally switch Mimikyu or like Glacial Lance is really strong. Like what if they shadow sneak and Glacial Lance or they have Cobra Berry or something? I, like there's a couple ways this can go wrong, but our opponent Dynamaxes, but our Urshifu does huge damage thanks to the choice band. Unfortunately, oh God, it's weakness policy. Lunala moves next and ignores Mimikyu's disguise, taking it out thanks to the special attack boost we set up for the turn before. Lunala takes a max Hailstorm narrowly, and we win the game without losing a Pokemon or even needing to Dynamax. A strong start. I played a bit more and made it to just outside the top 100. In order to make it into the top 100, I'd need to defeat a nightmare matchup. Zapdos plus Grimmsnarl. Ah, uh, okay. They have Zapdos and Grimmsnarl and Among Us. I think it's kind of doomed. I don't think I can win this. You see, Zapdos is able to hit my Pheromosa, Urshifu, Primarina, and Mandibuzz for super effective damage. And even ditto, depending on what I transform into. To make matters worse, Grimmsnarl excels at keeping Zapdos alive. Thankfully, there's no guarantee my opponent will bring both of them, so maybe I shouldn't be so worried. It's so doomed. It is so unbelievably doomed. I decide to go for damage on the Grimmsnarl and Trick Room with Lunala, hoping my opponent goes for Max Airstream. Pretty sure this is Light Screen Max Airstream into the Pheromosa slot. Oh no, they didn't Dynamax. Zapdos decides not to Dynamax, and Grimmsnarl sets up a Light Screen. This is more or less the worst case scenario. However, dodge it! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, could be worse, could be worse, could be worse, could be worse. That's life orb damage. You got a little damage down, all right. And I get Trick Room up, which I mean, uh, could be worse. It's probably not the best time for Trick Room, but I've seen worse times as well. With Trick Room up, Grimmsnarl is now the fastest thing on the field, and my Pheromosa is in a really awkward spot. I'm worried Pheromosa will get taken out, so I protect it and try to do some damage to the Zapdos with Meteor Beam. Oh no! 
Oh, no! Oh, that went so badly. No, 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 no. I'm worried my Feromosa will be taken out by Spirit Break and Heat Wave. So I decided to use Wide Guard with Finala. The only problem with this plan is... Oh my god. It's so doomed. I feel like I'm getting every single turn wrong. Whoops. Lunala's wide guard does nothing as my opponent uses both their Pokemon to take out my Lunala. <sighs> well, there goes my restricted Pokemon. This is probably doomed. Pheromosa finishes off Grimmsnarl, but the situation is looking bleak. My opponent sends out Urshifu as I send out Primarina. I'm worried about taking too much damage, so I decide to Dynamax and Max Guard with Primarina. And I'm pretty sure that the Urshifu wants to protect here. Oh no, oh no, they read it. Oh no, they're gonna double Pheromosa. Oh no, oh, I didn't even consider them. I don't know why they'd make such a hard read. I really didn't think they'd make such a hard read here. Um. Oh, okay, okay, we're fine. I mean, it's not ideal, but we're okay. Cause now we bring Urshifu down to Focus Ash, which is, um, and if they're, they could be Choice Band, so if we take it out, Okay, it's Ash. Okay, well, with Pheromos at 1 HP and Tricker Mending, I expect Urshifu will Sucker Punch my Long Bug to finish it off. So I try to go for Speed Swap to make Sucker Punch fail. My opponent has other plans and Sucker Punches Primarina before Primarina finishes it off and sets the rain up. Surprisingly, Zapdos targets down my Pheromosa before I can use Speed Swap, leaving us each with our final two Pokemon. My opponent sends out Zacian, the strongest Pokemon in the game, and I'm forced to send my last Pokemon out. Ditto. Now, you might think the situation looks pretty bad, but there's a secret you might not know about. Ditto always copies the Pokemon across from it. In this case, since Ditto is sent out across from Zacian, it will turn into Zacian due to its ability. What's really neat, though, is how Transform actually works. When Ditto transforms into a Pokemon, it copies that Pokemon's typing and moves, but it also copies changes to its stats. If Ditto switches into a Garchomp that used Swords Dance, it will also have the Swords Dance boost. Make sense so far? Well, Zacian's ability gives it an attack boost when it is sent out. And because abilities activate based on who is faster, Ditto copies Zacian after it's already gotten its attack boost. This isn't anything too out of the box on its own until you remember that Ditto transforming activates any abilities that happen when a Pokemon is sent out again. Meaning, Ditto gets two attack boosts instead of one. Now, Zacian with one attack boost can't normally KO other Zacian, but what about after two? My opponent protects with both Pokemon to stall the last turn of my Dynamax, but Primarina still does huge damage through Protect. It all comes down to if Ditto can finish off Zacian now. Thanks to the Choice Scarf, my Ditto always moves first, so it's all up to how much damage I do. Please, 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 please! I've seen, I've seen opposing Zacian survive this. Please, 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 please! Oh, okay. Ditto finishes off their Zacian, even moving before their speed-boosted Zapdos, and Primarina seals up the game with Moonblast. I mean, I, I'm actually kind of in disbelief we won that. That was looking pretty doomed, but I mean, we'll take it. Let's go ditto. Woo, that game was pretty hairy. You know what else is hairy? Me. This video is brought to you by manscaped.com, the global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. I started growing facial hair over 10 years ago, and I've used a bunch of razors since then, and Manscaped clearly stands out above the rest. Manscaped hooked me up with a bunch of stuff from their ultra premium collection. And I was especially impressed by their brand new collection of products designed to make winter less brutal on your skin and hair. I personally liked the Ultra Premium Hydrating Body Spray to make sure my skin is nice and moisturized. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off and free international shipping, plus two free gifts when you use promo code WolfieVGC at checkout. Manscaped, always use the right tools for the job. After a grueling climb, I made it to the top 10. Rank 1 was within my sight, but I still had a long way to go. My next obstacle would be an opponent featuring a team with Kyurem White and Zacian, two restricted Pokemon with absurd damage output. I'm pretty sure Kyurem just one-shots my whole team. <laughs> to make matters worse, my opponent had a Suicune, a Pokemon that could provide really annoying utility and was very difficult to remove. The battle starts and I lead off with Feromosa and Lunala against my opponent Suicune and Kyurem. Oh, okay, I mean, yeah, Suicune and Kyurem, it's a good lead from them. I decide to make a hard read that my opponent wants to use Tailwind, and preemptively set up my Trick Room with Lunala to cancel it out. Okay, a Protect, that that could be, okay, if, if they don't Tailwind, it's pretty bad. Like, if I eat Scald here and get burned, then I'd probably just auto lose, well, maybe not auto lose, but okay, so, okay, so they do decide to set up Tailwind here. I don't blame them. When you lead with Feromosa, most people aren't going to expect you to go for Trick Room turn one, but uh, yeah, no damage is dealt, but the turn goes in my favor. Now the Kyurem is totally exposed. I decide to double into it. Rillaboom switches in and promptly gets knocked out, but Suicune decides to put a damper on Lunala's fun with Snarl. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's really lucky. That's actually, that's actually a 
pretty major deal, to be honest. Lunala dodging there is huge, as it keeps my special attack up and doesn't break Lunala's shadow shield. We aren't out of the woods yet, though, as my opponent sends back in there Kiram. Now, at this point, I'm thinking to myself, this Kiram has protected once and then switched out. Do I really think they're going to leave it exposed here? Or do I think it's more likely they go for Protect and Snarl again? I decide to hard read my opponent and reveal another of Lunala's supporting moves in Wide Guard as I switch to Primarina. Kiram, however, Dynamaxes. Oh, uh, okay, that is not good. That is actually really bad. Um, if they hard read this and go for like Scald plus Max Wormwind, I probably am just straight up dead. The question is, who are they targeting down here? I really didn't think they'd attack here, but oh, never mind. That's actually the best case scenario. Never mind. Uh, assuming they snarl here, if they Scald, I mean, if they, like the thing is, if they're not snarling, they're not, they're not doing anything that's that threatening. Okay, it is just snarl. Just like a few turns ago, we're again in a situation where the Kiram is a sitting duck. It's time to Dynamax Lunala. Do they go for the double max guard? Because I think that's their best move in this instance, since they know that they're vulnerable. And if they get the double and snarl me, then all of a sudden this whole game turns on its head, I think. Okay, they don't go for it. That's really good. How much is this going to do? It's a lot of damage. That's a Primarina is actually really strong. I don't think there's any world in which they can survive. This is plus one max rock ball, keep in mind. So it's a really, yeah, really powerful move. Curum goes down. So we're, we're in a really nice position here. Um, We still have a turn left of Trick Room, and Suicune is... I mean, Suicune's a problem, but um we'll have to see if it snarls here because if it doesn't snarl then it's kind of vulnerable to a certain extent i think okay they just called so uh the setting the stand up didn't matter oh yeah setting the stand up really didn't matter so with kiram down our opponents down to their last two pokemon i switched primarina into Faramosa, intending to set up for the next turn when trick room goes down so this should be fine we should definitely knock out station through this i think with the special attack boost uh oh uh oh that's a fair bit of chip damage oh they survive uh oh oh no Lunala, why now to some of you this might look like a winning position still after all my opponent only has two pokemon left and one of them is very low the truth is i'm about to lose this game zacian can protect while suicune tailwinds and then primarina gets knocked out by zacian while suicune knocks out my Feramosa with scald with only ditto left and no speed control, I'll lose with certainty. Normally how you'd get around this is to double into the Suicune, but Suicune is so bulky that my Pokemon can't KO it. Except they do they do protect, which is super nice. Ah, I really need this to do enough damage. Okay, do they have Citrus Berry? It's probably Moonblast is really strong. It's gonna be close here. Oh no, Citrus Berry, hold on. I think Moonblast, I think Moonblast kills from here. It's a really powerful move. It's a really, really, really powerful move. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on okay all right so what happened didn't i just say that i shouldn't be able to knock out suicune well lunala left us one last gift before being knocked out even though it didn't ko the zation lunala dropped suicune's defense with max phantasm allowing Feramosa to do way more damage with only zation left my opponent knows they can no longer win and forfeits the match after that game i know what you're thinking how could anyone watch this channel and not be subscribed well, believe it or not, only about 5% of my viewers are subscribed. If you're enjoying the content and want to see more high-level battles, I hope you'll consider supporting me and the channel. I was top 5 after my win and feeling confident. My next opponent, however, had a team that didn't resemble anything I'd tested against. Oh, uh, what is this? Reshiram and Lunala were the restricted, with a supporting cast of unusual Pokemon. I think it's okay, the only real thing is that I don't have a Dynamax Pokemon outside of Lunala, so it's just gonna make my options kinda limited in that regard, but other than that, it should be okay, I think. I thought my opponent might wanna go for Trick Room, but as the battle starts, I doubt myself. My opponent leads off with Tapu Lele and Lunala. Oh man, okay. So, I mean, this lead is volatile. Oh, they have shiny. I think what's most likely here is that it is Choice Scarf Tapu Lele with Dazzling Gleam. Now I'm in an awkward spot because my Lunala is probably slower than my opponent's and it's also the only good Dynamax Pokemon I have on my team. Fearing a Scarf Dazzling Gleam and Moongeist Beam, I decide to Dynamax my Lunala and Speed Swap. So if, if, they, if they just are counting on them being faster than me, then they would be in really big trouble here. Really? Really? Alice, how am I supposed to cover for that? All right, it's pretty doomed. It's actually pretty doomed. Alice, which is really bad. And to make matters worse, the opposing Tapu Lele has a Focus Sash. Thankfully, I should definitely survive my opponent's Lunala because I Dynamax. Okay, it's the end of the world. Uh, I lose. I don't think I can win this. This is so doomed. With Trick Room up, my Dynamax activated, my Lunala speed swapped, and my back Pokemon fast. 
this game is as good as over. I decide to hope that the Tapu Lele is fast, thinking maybe Feramosa can move before it thanks to the speed swap. If it's like neutral speed Lele, then my Feramosa will be slower. But no, yeah, of course. Not only, not only is the Lele slower than my Lele or than my Lunala or my whatever it's called. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, wrong dodge. Oh, Feramosa. That's actually, that's actually an enormous dodge. So, okay, Shadow Ball slow Alley Switch Lele is not good, obviously, but double missing Heat Wave there is a major deal. But yeah, this should KO, I think. Okay, that, that was a huge swing. My opponent sends out Reshiram and Rotom, and I'm feeling pretty good because Lunala should be able to stick around for its final turn of Dynamax. My opponent Dynamax is Reshiram, but I'm not too worried because Lunala is so bulky. <laughs> why does everything on this team have a ghost? Why, why, have, how, why has my Lunala been hit by two ghost moves and neither of them were from their Lunala? And their Lunala hit me, the only fire move that's been shown this game is not from Reshiram, it's from Lunala. Feramosa not only dodged the Heat Wave, it then goes on to dodge a Will-O-Wisp. And because I speed swap turn one, Feramosa got an attack boost from KOing Tapu Lele rather than the speed boost it would normally get. This very specific set of circumstances lets it one-shot Rotom with close combat, something it normally can't do. This Feramosa ate its Cheerios this morning. This is insane. It's Reshiram against my final three Pokemon now. Reshiram tries to KO my Feramosa, but because my Extendo bug was so hard to hit, it's still holding its Focus Sash. Mandibuzz misses a Toxic, but how much is this gonna do? Okay, that's absurd. That is actually, that is absurd damage. Feramosa finally goes down, but the damage has been done. And with Trick Room expiring, there's nothing stopping Urshifu from coming in and finishing off Reshiram. Pop. Very nice. Okay, we got so lucky that we actually got so lucky this game. After another few wins, I'd made it all the way to rank two. One more win might be enough to finally let me reach rank one. My opponent had a rain team with Zacian. I'm worried about a possible Kyogre and Seismitoad lead with Max Airstream and Water Spout blowing through my team. So I decide to lead with Urshifu and Lunala so I can Trick Room and Sucker Punch. All right, unload the Toad, unclog the Frog. And getting the Sucker Punch to Kyogre here is really nice. How much is this gonna do? That is honestly more than I expected. Choice Spin Urshifu is really good, but they're actually Choice Scarf Kyogre. And instead of going for a water move, they go for Thunder here. Okay, I mean, I'm not complaining about that. I'm definitely not complaining about that. And Airstream, is that also into Urshifu? That went so well. That actually went so well. With Trick Room up, the momentum has swung heavily in my favor. I send out Primarina and decide to Dynamax. Full health Primarina in the range just demolishes Zacian. How much is this going to do? I think that against non-Assault Fest, it probably should KO, but if it's bulky Assault Fest... All right, that's 100% Assault Fest. It actually did way less than I expected. I'm honestly not sure if even going for the Meteor Beam was smart because it's a 10% chance to just immediately lose the game because they Thunder my Primarina at that point. Like, the special attack boost is nice, but Moon Ghost Beam probably would have KO'd as well, and... Moon Ghost Beam would have been close. I'm actually not positive. So Max Overgrowth comes out. That's fine. Um, Grassy Terrain being up is actually okay for me. How much does Primarina take from this? A, a fair bit, to be honest. My opponent sends out Ditto. This isn't cause for alarm just yet, though, as most Ditto hold the Choice Scarf item, and my Lunala has a special attack boost. Primarina finishes off Seismitoad, but... Oh, no. You've got... You... Really? Not only is it not Choice Scarf, but it also wins the Speed Tie. I really was not expecting that, and things only get worse. We each send out our final Pokemon. Zacian on my opponent's side, Ditto on mine. Ditto can't copy opposing transformed Pokemon, so my imposter fails and I'm stuck with naked Ditto. Ah! Good God! I decide to target down Zacian with my Primarina. I think that's actually bad for me, if you can believe it. I wanted to cover Zacian protecting, so I targeted it with Transform. But since I knocked it out, Transform redirected into Ditto, who I can't copy. The only Pokemon left that I can Transform into is Primarina now. Come on, Primarina, you're so strong. This is Rain, this is Life Orb. It's low base HP Ditto, it's not enough. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, I messed up big time. I should have Transformed into Primarina. Oh no. Oh no, oh no, and now I try to transform to Primarina, but there's no Primarina to transform into, and I'm stuck with Naked Ditto in the end game. Oh my god. With only Naked Ditto left, I can't do any damage, and their Ditto takes mine out with a Meteor Beam, earning me a crushing defeat. I was devastated to come so close and not make it, but I knew I couldn't give up. After two more wins, I was back to where I'd been before. Rank 2. One more shot to make it to number 1 in the world. I'd been hoping for a good matchup, but my hopes were dashed at team preview. My opponent had both Palkia and Amoongus, as well as Zacian. My team is unbelievably weak to Amoongus, and the only Pokemon I have that can handle Palkia is Primarina, who is totally invalidated by Amoongus. This isn't pretty, but I, I think it's my only chance at winning this, legitimately. My opponent leads off with Shocker, Amoongus, and Palkia. 
I'm thinking that this might just be Spore plus Trick Room, in which case, like if they want Trick Room to go up, then what I can do is I can actually switch Ditto in and copy Among Us. And if that happens, then I at least can match the Spore next turn. Ditto does copy their Amoongus, but something unexpected happens next. They actually switched out though. Who's this? Wait, what's bringing in here? Oh, wait, didn't I Meteor Beam this slot? Oh, I think they expected Max Mindstorm because Lunala's Psychic type. Like I, I don't run Psychic moves on Lunala, but my opponent doesn't know that. Oh, that is not ideal. If this had been Trick Room, we would have been in an amazing spot. Ah, uh, I actually think there's a chance that Ditto gets one shot by Max Dragon here, by the way, because my HP is so low and Amoongus' best HP is their best status is HP stat. So we'll have to see here. The question is who's faster between Lunala and Palkia? Palkia, okay, Worm Wind. Oh God, if Ditto goes down here, I'm in really bad shape. Okay, it goes into Lunala. That's okay. It's actually okay. It might, like, honestly, even if Ditto goes down, I would have had plus one max, like, Lunala who I could have maxed, which would have been all right, I think. If I miss Meteor Beam here, we are in really bad shape. But if I connect, I actually, if I if I recall correctly, I have a chance to KO here. It actually might even be a good chance, depending on how they're trained. Power Herb, now's the moment of truth. Do I connect? And if I connect, do I KO? Like, going up a Pokemon on the first turn is, okay, I connect. If I can pick up this KO, it's just gonna make my life so much easier. Okay, that's really, really, really fortunate. Honestly, like given how bad the leads were, this turn went really well, I think. That honestly went way better than expected. But our opponent sends out Amoongus once again, and we're in the same spot that we were turn one. Wait, 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 wait. Ditto's ability is Imposter, and Amoongus is Among Us. Ditto transformed into Amoongus is literally Imposter Among Us. It's literally, I literally have Imposter Among Us. Wait, that's so funny. Okay, here, I'm pretty sure they want to Max Dragon into Ditto and Spore into my Lunala. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Ma I'm going to Amoongus Beam into their Amoongus, and I'm going to switch into Primarina because what this does is it, it's immune to dragon move so if they go for max dragon into my ditto oh they actually rage powder if they max dragon into primarina i'm actually in such good shape ah okay okay it, it's not good it's not the end of the world though it's pretty bad actually but it, it could be worse i mean i think i see what i have to do so what i'm gonna do here i'm gonna set up i'm gonna play this kind of complicated i think I go into Ditto. I transform into Palkia now because I'm on the right side rather than the left side. Um, The opponent can't KO my Primarina and they can't KO my Palkia and they really don't want Palkia running around. So we know their Palkia is going to go for Max Wormwind into my Primarina. Because my Ditto's Choice Scarf, I move first. So what I can do here is I can go for Spatial Run into Amoongus, Max Geyser into Amoongus because I'm going to need the rain up for next turn and pray that it KOs and count on them KOing my Ditto uh, this turn. And what that allows me to do then is that we I give up Ditto Palkia. I KO their Amoongus. Hopefully, I, I want a Starfield to prevent war here but i won't chaos so i need to go for geyser um and then azation switches in and then i have pre-marina next to Feramosa, and i go i can go for my final gambit here's my dynamax this is their last turn of dynamax as well which is nice i think i've done a pretty good job of stalling it out i don't know how their palky is trained so does spatial rend and max geyser do enough to opposing among us that it chaos because if we don't ko here and they just spore even if we don't ko and they don't spore it's it gets really messy really quickly they don't protect, which is good. Protect would have been awful. I wouldn't have expected a protect here, to be honest, because they were, you know, vulnerable to my Palkia and my Primarina. So we're going to go for Spatial Run. We connect. That's the that's some of the RNG that we can avoid this turn. If we miss Spatial Run, it's just doomed. How much is it going to do? We need to do like 60. Oh, I think I'm I think I'm in really bad shape. I think I am in really bad shape. Ditto goes down. This was part of the plan. Oh, man. Just Primarina. I mean, it's a really powerful move. It's stab boosted. It's rain boosted. Does it do enough here? Come on, Primarina. I don't think it does enough. 60 for the space you're gonna leave like 40. <gasps> Wait, I can win. 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 That was a huge KO. I mean, I'm assuming it's Asian. I actually haven't gotten confirmation. Okay, it is Asian. I just assumed. I mean, it makes sense that it be Asian. It's two versus two, but I have one final trick left up my sleeve. Normally, Zacian would outspeed and KO my Primarina, but even though Zacian outspeeds Primarina, it doesn't outspeed Feramosa. And by speed swapping Primarina, I give Primarina uh, Feramosa speed stat. Allowing it to move before Zacian. Max Geyser comes out. There's no way it lives this. And that's that's a one-hit KO. And and now I don't think Palkia can beat Primarina. It shouldn't be able to do anything here. Hydro Pump. Okay, it connects, but I, I, it doesn't matter. I, I don't need uh, Feramosa anymore. I think I've done it. Wait, hold on. Focus Sash activates. Very nice. We know their items. So they can't even Quick Claw or Bright Powder us. This is guaranteed game. There's no way they can win this. And they forfeit. Wait, hold on. Is that enough? I think that might be enough. We were ranked two. Wait, did we do it? Do we just do it? There's no way, right? I feel like this has got to be some kind of cruel joke. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Please, please. Oh, it's not going to do it. Oh, it's taking so long. Huh? <gasps> oh my God, we did it. I'm in disbelief. I literally can't believe that. I did. I legitimately didn't think that this one was possible. And that's how I got to number one in the world using only Pokemon Markiplier would smash. I win. I had a lot of fun with this challenge, so I hope you enjoyed watching. 
If there are any other goofy challenges you'd like me to try, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and please remember to either subscribe or stay hydrated.